Hey everyone, Selwyn here from winstrength.com bringing you the final review of the Power Building 2 template by Barbell Medicine. So, what is the Power Building 2 template? It is one of the templates introduced uh, early this year as part of the new digital wave of templates from Barbell Medicine. Um, it includes a lot of data that they've used in the past to reformulate their old legacy templates. The new wave is really cool. Um, it includes a whole host of different templates stretching from CrossFit to power lifting to obviously the power building to um, general strength and hypertrophy uh, even rehab and endurance protocols for those that are inclined that way so there's a whole host of resources there available um, I chose the power building 2 template there's power building 1 uh, based on what they recommended, I had a bit more training experience, so I opted for the second version, or the more advanced version of it. Uh, what it basically is, um, it's power building is power lifting and bodybuilding combined into a new-ish way of formulating thinking, formulating training, where you're kind of trying to achieve both strength gains as well as hypertrophy gains. And I know that seems a bit like, duh, but... Yes, one drives the other, but to have them both concurrently happening at the same time is a little difficult. Um, and that's one of the limitations of the program. It's not of the program itself, it's of the power building style in general. Uh, but I'll get to that later on. What it is, is basically the power building to template is a 10 week program that's uh, split up into two five week phases, where the first five week phase is based on volume and hypertrophy, and the second five week phase is based on strength and lower reps and intensity so we're focusing on higher reps for the first five weeks building up into some more strength output in the later weeks uh, squat bench press deadlift and overhead press make up the four main movements followed by two accessory movements for the day so you're looking at around three exercises every single day four days a week uh, me personally it took anywhere from 90 minutes up to around 120 minutes, maybe pushing 130 minutes uh, based on the day and time frame. Uh, generally the program is built so it, it ramps up each wave or each phase so the first couple of weeks are a lot shorter than the the fourth and the tenth week are probably the longest weeks you'll have because it, it's basically peaking each each of the phases is finalizing on that so you're doing a lot more work in each of those weeks also included uh, GPP days or general physical preparedness days. Uh, what those basically are is simply just cardio days and because it is a hypertrophy power building style template they put in your abs and arms. So abs, biceps, triceps. And again like the rest of the program you're ramping up over the course of the 10 weeks. So the first couple of GPP days are purely just steady state, really low intensity, not a lot of direct arm and ab movements. And then as each week progresses, you're, you're progressively building up in intensity and eventually you get to the point where you're doing two, two GPP days a week with some steady state, high intensity and a lot more arms and ab workouts thrown in there. So it's really cool because that's a great way of thinking about how to program for yourself. You never want to start off like I'm going to run 10Ks and then just 10Ks every single week. We're starting off one, two, three, we're ramping up gradually which makes perfect sense as to how general physical just general physicality is concerned you don't start off doing a lot you start off with a little and ramp your way up which is what this template does not only in the strength department but also in the cardio department as well but with that in mind I didn't follow the template as prescribed because if there was scheduling conflicts or some days I didn't want to work out that the GPP days would be the first days to disappear so at the very least, I would do one GPP day a week, and that would generally be this slow and steady state. Uh, my thinking being that I would prefer to drop off the high intensity stuff because, in essence, weight training in itself is interval training to a degree. You're exerting a lot of effort, then resting, exerting, then resting, whereas steady state forces you to go for 20 to 40 minutes of just continuous movement. So that's a bit of a contrast to the training. So if I had to drop a workout, I would drop out the high intensity days, so not exactly done as prescribed. So uh, we'll start off with my results that I got out of the program. Uh, first off, uh, body weight goals, there was no change in 
my body weight over the 10 weeks, nor was there any change in the body fat percentage based on my cheap body fat scale that I got off Amazon. So I wouldn't put any credence into the actual number, which was 19%. Uh, but because it's a cheap piece of equipment, I figure it's at least measuring right. So if I had a broken ruler, if I had a ruler that was inaccurate, at least if I used that to measure things, I would know if there was a change in anything. So my logic being, if there was any change in my body weight, that would be more can, more of an issue for me rather than the actual number on the scale. So with that being said, I went from 208 to 208, I believe, and stayed at 19%. Again, not really an issue with the program. I didn't really have the goal of body composition changes or dropping weight, increasing weight. I just kind of wanted to maintain the same weight point of the program isn't necessarily to drop or gain weight that's really based on your own diet or nutrition so I would suggest doing this program if you want to gain or lose weight uh, read some of their other information regarding nutritional habits make some changes nutritionally because really it's not what you do in the gym it's what you're doing for the other 16 sorry no we're not working out for eight hours uh, what you're doing for the other 22 hours of the day that are really going to help modify your body composition. So what are you eating three to five times a day? How are you sleeping for those eight, well ideally eight hours, but anywhere from seven to nine hours a day? Those are the things that are really going to help change your body composition and this is really just what helps you improve your, your body physically. So with well, that being said, I wouldn't pay attention to my body weight or my body fat percentage lack of change just because it wasn't something I was shooting for. We did see increases in the bench press, which is cool. I went from 315 pounds at a, probably an RPE 10 to 320 pounds at RPE 9. Uh, we increased my deadlift from 485 at a all out max to 495, which was huge, but that was in an RPE 9.5, probably close to an RPE 10, if we're really being honest here. Uh, the overhead press was matched, that was stayed the same at 195, but I would say the 195 felt easier than it did last time because I believe the overhead press was a max, was my, me testing out my singles, whereas this was more of a training max. So again, a little bit of an improvement I would say because the 195 felt lighter as it were in my hands. Uh, the one downfall was the squat went down from 460 all time PR, but it was a 455 working one rep at RPE 8. So. I would say definitely obviously improvements in the bench press and deadlift, the overhead press and the squat kind of fall in the same realm where I'm lifting somewhat similar weights but at lower RPE. So I think we could call those a soft win, definitely the bench press and the deadlift, huge wins. So then my results again, I'll, I'll talk about it later, but these are pretty good numbers considering the overall objectives of the power building style and ethos of training. So now let's move on to the cons of the program. Uh, con number one would be the lack of deload, and I think that might be a personal preference, a personal bias kicking in here, but based on my own training history and experience and my thoughts and preferences, I like to have a deload week every four to five weeks. This program didn't have that, so I think around the fourth, right after the fourth week, some mental nocebo-ing was happening, some mental biases were kicking in where I was like, I really should have a deload, but I kept pushing through the program, uh, weights kept going up, uh, those improvements were held around the week 8, 9 mark, the week 10 mark, we didn't really see any improvements in anything, that was kind of a, a mini deload week almost, because it was just, I think I was overstressed, mentally fatigued, physically fatigued, and, and week 10 was just kind of bring, bringing it home, I wasn't really shooting for the fences as it were, so... That, that could be pro my own problem. Um, another issue that crept in was my uh, lack of discipline with sticking to the recommended RPEs. <laughs> Some of the weights I would shoot over and above the RPE just because it felt good that day, but realistically I probably shouldn't have done that, and by sticking to RPE 8s, I think that would have, like proper sticking to properly RPE 8, 
I probably wouldn't have needed a deal it or felt so mentally and physically exhausted just because it would have auto-regulated myself to not need a deal it for the full 10 weeks. But nevertheless, probably my fault in execution, not necessarily a, a problem with the program, but again, I personally like a deal it week after week five or four, so that's your own personal preferences and again something you should look out for when you are doing your own programming when you don't have a coach necessarily that can oversee your training where you have to be your own coach to a degree tailor your own programs even if the program takes you 11 weeks to complete rather than 10 if you needed that deload weekend but in the middle and it reduced your mental and physical stress and fatigue then then i think go for it but that's something that i should have done in hindsight but hey we're here now i, I stuck it through the 10 weeks and I think we had some pretty good results. Okay, so the next uh, con I want to point out is the potential, uh, the lack of exercise selection and diversity in the program. Um, I didn't think that it would be that big of an issue for me going into it, but towards the tail end of the program, I started to get a little uh, bored of the movements that were being prescribed. So we only have two, two phases, effectively, and the squat, bench, deadlift, an overhead press are a constant for each of those weeks and then throughout the each day has its own separate movement however you're only going to, you're really only getting two sets of different movements with one of those exercise blocks being taken out by the squat bench dead press so with that being said you are having a very limited um, limited choice of movements and I think for me personally for someone that generally likes repetitiveness with the workout routine because I'm able to push, uh, I'm able to challenge myself with the weights that I use, but with this one, for some reason, just the, I got a little bit of a mental stagnation, a little bit of boredom with the program towards the ninth and 10th ten, week where I just felt like, oh, I wish I could do something else, um, which I've changed recently. I've had a couple of weeks of refreshing, but for the program, I think that lack of exercise selection should be something uh, just to be aware of when you go into it and just like mentally prepare yourself to not change a lot of movements and be prepared to do the same movements over and over again. None of the movements I thought were inherently bad or like were, I, I, I think all the movements were great, but I just thought maybe there could have been a couple of changes in the movements, maybe halfway through or a third of the way through so we're doing three sets of different movements or four sets of different movements rather than just two blocks of movements it's just something to keep in mind not a big problem because again it does allow you to build up the development specificity neur neural improvement just you get better at doing the movements because you're doing them for four weeks rather than changing up every week you can't change movements every week because then you won't be able to improve on those movements but you can't do the same thing over and over again because you get diminishing marginal returns the more i do something the less effective it becomes at changing changing the body because the the adaptation isn't there so i think i mean in the long in the big scheme of things four weeks is not a long time to do the same movements for so i think it's it's fine from that perspective but just because it is such a short program, it's only 10 weeks, we're actually doing five weeks of each movement, and maybe it was just that little extra week in each of those phases that made the that drew out the boredom, as it were. So moving on to the next thing I think that could have been improved on, it's something that I personally did towards the uh, end of the movements when the exercise selection allowed, especially with the bench press and deadlift, was to superset the movements. I found that this helped with keeping the exercise uh, the workout times down so that helped me stay under the two hour mark and then it also helped me I think improve some GPP, improve some endurance, improve some stamina along the way because I was able to do uh, the accessory movements so I was able to do like close grip bench with uh, stiff leg deadlifts alternating and keeping about a five minute rest in between each so we're reducing the rest period overall so the workouts themselves were shorter and I'm kind of taxing different muscle groups where I'm still taxing the same energy system so we're able to adapt some stamina there but still attack the chest and the, the bench and the deadlift uh, something I think that might you could look at doing if you want to do this program or any other templates you're doing try and find ways to superset workouts now they don't tell you to necessarily do this but I think it's possible with the way they've structured the program uh, and finally the biggest con is the fact that it's power building after doing 10 weeks, I don't think 
power building is the best style of training for most people. I think it's better to take a phasic approach to training where you attack strength and then you attack hypertrophy and other goals, but you target one specific goal along the way. Um, I've done the hypertrophy training templates and the powerlifting templates, both of which have helped me in those specific goals. And I think by trying to to do both in one, I think just inherent with that mindset, it doesn't allow you to achieve the best of both worlds. You're in essence getting the worst of both worlds. By not focusing purely on hypertrophy, we don't put on as much muscle mass as we could if we strictly focused on that. And then by not focusing strictly on uh, one rep max development, we're, we're halting those gains as it were. Both both of them, we're, we're, we're introducing some the concept of, of opportunity cost. When we can't dedicate two hours to strictly strength development, we're losing out the ability to gain strength. So by focusing on, on opposing goals, it stops us from achieving one goal greatly. And I experienced a lot more gains in my one rep max when I was doing purely the power lifting template. So I think the, I think the Babo Medicine Crew, it's just not possible to create a template where you're able to do both successfully. I think you have to do one and then the other. I think where this template or this style of training fits in is if you're either a power lifter looking to just vary their training and, and try and put on a little bit of hypertrophy while still doing one rep maxes or a bodybuilder that's wanting to increase their one rep maxes because you've been focused purely on hypertrophy style training. And I think they're really the only two occasions where power building is a great, is a useful tool. And even then I would say just sweep, swap it out. And if you're a bodybuilder, do a purely powerlifting program. And if you're a powerlifter, do a, a bodybuilding style program so that you are able to vary those movements and get the best out of that single outcome. But that's just my opinion. And what do I know? So let's move on to the pros of the program, which there are many. So the first pro I want to go over is the amount of material you receive when you sign up for the program. So what the one, one of the coolest things with the program is that you get, first off, you get a nice little booklet that goes over the program, goes over the literally everything. So it goes over your exercise selection, your sets, your reps, how to, it explains RPE training for those unfamiliar with it. It goes over what to do with injury management. Um, it goes, it, you get links as to how to perform each of the movements that they prescribe. So at least you can see someone else doing it correctly. Um, it explains GPP, RPEs, why they do the certain things that they do along the way, how to adjust the training to you. Um, you get access to the forum. I mean, you always get access to the public forum, and I found that they've been really good with responding to people. I didn't really have any questions, but I've perused the pro I've looked over the forum, and from what I can see, they're pretty responsive and very helpful with their responses. So I think if you sign up and you're part of the, you're one of the, clients, customers, you're going to have a huge amount of support because there's a great team behind them and they're all very knowledgeable, very educated and all evidence-based. So none of the recommendations you'll get are out of out of the ordinary. Uh, moving on to the spreadsheet, I want to include some screenshots of it. Uh, I'll probably black out a lot of the program just because I don't want to give that type of information away, but I do want you to see what the spreadsheet looks like because it's a very powerful spreadsheet and I know people if you're familiar with Excel you know how complex Excel can get developing sheets and developing formulas and this this the spreadsheet that they email out that you get is so powerful because you're able to it, it has RPE one rep max calculator so based on what you hit for how many reps at what RPE it suggests the weight to use for sets for the, sorry, for the reps and RPEs that you just did. So it's a really cool tool. Uh, a cool thing is you're able to track each and every set that you do and each and every rep that you do. So at the end of each week, you have a session time that you enter as well as uh, the session RPE. So how fatigued were you for that session as well? So it, accum it, it tabulates all this data and spits out your weekly metrics. So you can keep track of that. In hindsight, I should have kept track of my weekly metrics might have helped me uh, to ha handle fatigue a little better than I should have. But I just remember that now. So next time, definitely do that. If you haven't done it, definitely do that along the way. 
um, it gives you your weekly tonnage reports as well. You're able to draw up some graphs so you can see how you're tracking for the estimated one rep maxes. So you can see if you're stagnating, increasing based on the weights you've used. So that's really cool, really powerful. So you know that you're tracking and continually making progress along the way. And it is a two week, sorry, it's a two phase program, which I think is more complex than that because each week builds on builds up to the next week. So you're not just doing five by fives for 10 weeks. You're not just doing three by fives for 10 weeks, just four sets of eight, just increase the weight along the way. They play with intensities, RPEs, sets, and reps. So each, you can, if you look at the program from like a bird's eye view, you can see how they're plotting out strength development and um, hypertrophy development. So you're working on both tonnage and intensity and they and they use those two quite successfully I think along the way in order to drive really good gains and I think they structured the program really well obviously they have a lot of science and evidence to back that up but I think when you look at it they've they're not just giving you a study program it's a live program that can adapt to you as you build up so obviously they're wanting to accumulate a lot of stress so that you can adapt to that but you're also tailoring it with RPE so you can feather the amount of push you're pushing somebody with the RPE training so you can auto regulate along the way while still pushing them as far as you want them to go so I think that's they've successfully achieved a great way to, to push and hold back along the way because it's that fine balance of stressing too much and not doing enough work so there's that the next point is the exercise selection so I know I mentioned this in the cons before but it's actually a pro uh, for me personally, being in the garage gym, not having to use a lot of specialty equipment really is one of the huge benefits of this program is the fact that you're able to perform the entire program with a barbell and a flat bench and a squat rack. That's all. You don't need anything other than that. If you have the basic, basic equipment, you can get away with this program and execute it really, really well. There's no need for literally any special equipment like a kettlebell dumbbell, I'm going to list them all here and just make them scroll up. None of those movements are even options to perform in the in the program. Oh, obviously you can do them, but if you're trying to follow the program, you don't even need any, any specialty equipment other than squat rack, barbell, weights, and a flat bench. Everything else is kind of icing on the pudding, and really you could do... I got away with an adjustable bench and an SS yoke bar. That's it. The lack of exercise variety is both a pro and a con because you can get away with executing this program really well with very limited uh, limited gym equipment needs as it were. And finally I thought the GPP day was really cool. I kind of like being able to, you can just plug that in whenever you want. If you had extra time that day you could plug it in after a workout or you could do a, a separate day. I always chose to do it on a separate day. Uh, I just found that it it worked out better with my schedule just to throw in about an hour's work. Start off with cardio and then arm and ab training. So nothing too crazy. And again, the flexibility of the program was great because I don't say do this ab workout, do this bicep or tricep movement. It's just, you know how to, it's, it's not necessarily for beginners because it's like, you know what an ab movement is, do some abs. You know what arm workouts are, do some arms uh, for this amount of sets, for this amount of for these sets, for these reps, and then just do that. And then again, with the GPP, just like the strength, as I mentioned before, it builds up. So you're not just starting off with a thousand reps, you're going, you're, you're progressing up to higher and heavier loads for more volume and more tonnage. So it's a great thing with that. So I think there are the pros and the cons highlighted out. Um, just the overall rating now, I think eight out of 10, I think it was a great program. I think it's only pitfall is that it's power building. I would suggest doing literally any other of their programs. I'm personally not a big fan of the power building style of working out. I much more enjoyed their dedicated hypertrophy template and strength templates just because you are attacking a specific goal. And I, I me personally, I was able to get more pro productive results out of either a dedicated hypertrophy or strength program. So that being said, if you enjoy power building, definitely check this program out. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention the cost of the program. I picked it up on sale when they first released, so my cost was I believe $44 and I think the list price is $57. Uh, they occasionally run some sales 
either way, if you can wait, if you can hold out for a sale, do it. If you can't and you want to buy it now, I think it's still great value. The amount of information, educational material, the spreadsheet itself, the forums you get access to, um, I think everything about that, it's a great value. I think you're getting a lot for what you pay for. Just in regards to everything that you get, I think it's perfectly priced. If you can get it on sale, even better. But if not, I wouldn't hesitate to recommend this template or any other templates for that matter because I, I've done this will be the third barbell medicine template that I've done so all three I've been super stoked with super happy with the results and the the way they've unfolded and really everything about them and this has just been my least favorite out of the three just because it's power building and I've learned that I'm not a big fan of power building so there we go something I've learned about myself so that'll sum it up for today um, if you want I'll put links to the playlist where I do overviews of the program as I went through them so there was some weekly and daily training vlogs I'll leave links to the wind strength website my training blog where I wrote up a weekly overview of the weeks as I went along as well as the final written overview where I put a, a couple more details in there a little bit different uh, points but really the same but check it out if you want to read rather than watch this if you haven't made it this far already but anyway Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, I really appreciate your support. Please like and subscribe, all that good stuff. This has been Selwyn from Win Strength, and remember, a better life through strength.